Hey guys, welcome to my little classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and if you are a new student in my class, please remember not to have any notes or pen in your hand because I am giving all the ready-made notes for your exam purpose. In my today's class, I am going to explain the advantages, disadvantages, functions that can be delegated, functions that cannot be delegated and the purpose of delegated legislations. In my previous video, I have explained the meaning of delegated legislations, reasons for growth and classification and types of delegated legislations. If you have not gone through that video, please better go through that video so that you can understand this concept very clearly with this part two. Let us start the class from understanding the advantages of delegated legislations. Now I have made a list of about 14 such advantages and you can take the screenshot for the purpose of exams. The first and foremost advantage of delegating legislation is saving the precious time of parliament. Parliament cannot make all the legislation and kill all its time on that purpose only because it has to focus on developmental activities and it need time for that. By delegating few of the legislations to the executive, parliament gets such precious time. So that is the biggest advantage of the delegating legislations. Now the second important aspect is knowledge. Now when it comes to the knowledge of the legislator, yeah, we have few legislatures who have very good knowledge of some particular subject but mostly they will not have all scientific details or technical details of a particular topic so it is very essential for the participation of executives to give strength on those topics so that the law comes in a very shaped way that's very important other than that the knowledge of locality of particular requirement will be more available with the executive than the legislatures so it is very essential for the executive to participate in such technicalities and give details of particular uh, place or people category of people all those stuff can be done better by executives so the participation from the executive is very much required other than that if there is any secret or confidential project it cannot be discussed in parliament open house so in that case it can be transferred to the executive and executive can discuss in detail and then submit to the parliament so that it can take it forward other than that increase in quality standard of the law is also one of the important reason for which delegated legislation is growing faster and faster and that is the advantage also and it can reduce the errors of the law and legislations that is also possible and during the emergencies executive can make law quickly and implement the same and it will give flexibility to the executive and legislature to manage the requirements of the people. Now these are the very important advantage along with that there is one beautiful saying which says this is or uh, delegated legislation is a necessary evil. Matlab, it is required you cannot avoid it but at the same time it is an evil. Now if they are saying it is an evil let's try understand why they are saying it or what are the major disadvantages of delegating legislations in my next slide. The next important and interesting aspect is disadvantages of delegated legislations. Now I have made a list of about 12 such disadvantages. Please take screenshot and go through them individually because I am not going to explain each of them to save time. Now what happens? Who makes law? Laws are basically made by legislatures. When legislature is making a law, they know that if I make a good law, people will re-elect me but if I make a bad law they will not elect me again so they have that liability towards people whereas if executive gets any power to prepare a legislation they will not be too much bothered about people because they are not elected by people they may misuse the power also and they may add too much technicalities in the law so that people cannot understand itself and the second important aspect is when it comes to laws made by legislature there will be a lot of discussion debate public opinion wisdom sharing all those stuff happens whereas when it made by executive all this might miss so that is one another disadvantages and i think i have already told seven eight of them please go through my uh, entire list so that you get more content for your exams the next important question is what can be delegated and what can't be delegated let us try understand what can be delegated. The first thing is executive can decide the date of commencement of particular act. For example, legislature has passed a law and executive can decide from which state such law will be come into effect. That can be done by the executive and most of the time legislature prepares only the skeleton of a particular law and executive gives all the other details and makes such law strengthened. So that function also can be delegated and 
executive can exclude or include certain areas or people in a particular act so that is also possible along with that it can modify or suspend certain laws in a particular place according to the requirement and if it is any time bound related act it can increase the period or decrease the period that is also possible and one of the most important delegation is framing the rules that is always given to the executive that you need to remember Along with that, removing the difficulties as discussed under Henry VIII rules, which is all about adding or deleting any clauses based on the requirement of the executive to implement a particular law without any hassle. Now, these are the things which can be delegated. Let us try and understand what cannot be delegated. When it comes to the functions that cannot be delegated, you should write three important points in your answer because everywhere I got these three points. One. It cannot make any amendment on the Indian constitution. Number two, it cannot make any amendment on the parliamentary laws. Number three, it cannot impose any tax. These are the three important things you need to mention in your answer. These cannot be delegated. Along with that, the executive cannot repeal a law. That means uh, call back a law that is not possible with the executive. And it also cannot implement any future laws. For example, if some law is available in other state, such laws can be implemented. But if something is not available anywhere and parliament is thinking of bringing that, such laws cannot be implemented by executive before parliament bringing in. That's very important. And whatever parliamentary laws or constitution is there, it cannot do any amendment on that. And the executive should use its Henry VIII clause right in a limited way only. It cannot use for whatever its wills and wish. So that's very important aspect. You can take a screenshot of this slide for other points. With that, I am moving to the last part of this presentation. If you have already gone through my first video and this video till now, you have the answer for purpose for delegated legislations. I know, but then I prepared this slide because if there is any question on purpose of delegated legislations, my students should have ready-made notes so that I prepared this repetitive slide for you guys. Now, why do we need or the purpose of delegated legislations to enable an act, to extend an act, to include certain areas or people, to exclude certain areas or people, to supplement particular laws, to modify particular laws as per the local or people requirement to adopt from some other acts and to remove difficulties as discussed under Henry VIII clause to classify certain acts and to put penalty for the violations. These can be the major purpose for delegating certain laws or legislations. In my next class, I am bringing all the interesting and important case laws as far as delegated legislations are concerned and I know I have to bring one small video on subdelegation. With that, I am concluding this class. If you have not yet subscribed me, this is time for you to subscribe my channel. And if you want to watch the same content in Hindi, please subscribe my other channel, Kachi Hindi Paki Law. I know videos there are coming quite slow. And please like, share and comment my videos. All the very best for your exams. And thank you so much.